Good morning, Sasan Bambara. Good morning, Sinner. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Crypto Degenerates. I am Rob, one of your hosts. That is Darko laughing over there, your other host. And together we make up the real Crypto Degenerates, not the fake ones. There are fake ones out there. You have to be careful. But we're the real Crypto Degenerates. We don't talk about art. We don't talk about nonsense. Uh, we talk about cryptocurrency. How are you doing tonight, Darko? Oh, curry roll, curry roll, very good, very good curry roll tonight, you. Ah, very good. So you're, you're, you're well fed, you've had, you've had your meal, you had, you had your yes. food. Yes, burning our salt coming very soon. So good to hear it, so good to hear it. It's always nice to hear that you're well fed. Have you had enough cigarettes tonight? You're all, you're all well doped up. Well fed and well bled very soon. Oh, goodness. <laughs> all right, we don't, we don't. We don't. We don't need to know about that. Ah, uh, interesting week in crypto. What's going on, Rob? What's going on, brother? Ah, uh, well. You been you well? Know. Well, I I've been well. Not everybody that I care about has been well, but I've been well. Um, uh, and we uh, we we get ready to do another show for these people. What else can you say? Got it all. Ah, uh, all right. Well, top news item tonight. For those of you uh, that are expecting this, we're not going to spend much time with it because there's really not much to say. Um, a personal friend of mine and my mentor, uh, John McAfee, has been detained in Spain um, on a uh, Interpol warrant for the uh, uh, issued by the United States. Uh, he's uh, been charged uh, with a number of uh, violations of uh, tax code in the uh, under the United States system. And they're going to be looking to extradite him back to the United States. Um, and needless to say, um, I'm not happy about this, and I'm sure that, that John's not happy about it either. Uh, the um, you know, extradition is not a straightforward process, so that's going to take some time. Um, basically, I guess, you know, there's going to be probably most of the people watching tonight are going to be of one mind, but there's a lot of people in the world who are of another mind. Um, and, uh, you know, are viewing this maybe as a good thing. Um, but currently, let, let's face facts, we have a president that has only paid $750 in taxes serving in the United States. Um, and this is something that, you know, is not unique to any individual uh, that they decide to go after. So um, it, it's a bit strange uh, and a bit unusual to see uh, a 76 year old man being pursued so relentlessly. Uh, to bring him back, quote unquote, to justice. Uh, it makes no sense. So then they're going to lock him in a cell and accomplish what? Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I remember uh, before our uh, John's second campaign for president, uh, when he was discussing whether he was going to run, uh, I said to him, you know, pretty much point blank, well, you know, don't you want a retirement? <laughs> Wouldn't you just like to enjoy life a little bit and, and not have to fight all the time? Um, and, uh, you know, John was very clear that he, he's not doing these things for himself. He's very passionate about freedom. He loves his country. He loves America and what it is supposed to stand for, what the country was founded, the principles that the country was founded upon. And he believes, as I believe, that the people who founded this country, if they were alive today, would be absolutely disgusted and sick to their stomach at what it had become, okay? It has become a festering shithole of control. And that's not what, what, what this country was put here for. This country was put here for because the people were sick of control, the control of the king. And we're not supposed to have taxation without representation. Well, I'm not represented in our government. They lock out our political parties. They lock out anybody with my viewpoint, with John's viewpoint. We're not allowed to participate. So we have no representation. On what basis is he supposed to be paying these taxes? We can go on about this for, for days, years, 
People that are never going to agree, that's fine. They want to make the world safer by controlling other people. Uh, and, and these are just, you know, miserable people. I don't care that there's more of you. You people have to be stopped. So uh, I, I commend John McAfee. He's, he's willing to take risks that other people aren't willing to take. The rest of us, you know, we comply so that we don't get scooped up and thrown in jail ourselves. And, and he decided not to go that route. Maybe. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Um, I, I do know this. Uh, you know, McAfee Antivirus was a very successful company, and he has paid more taxes into the public coffers in his life than most people make in their lives. Okay, so if you want to talk about somebody who's contributed to this so-called public good, whereby you get to take people's money and spend it on garbage, okay, John McAfee's put more in the pot than most people. So on what basis they feel they have any moral right to prosecute him, I, I, I personally don't understand it, but his friends and his family are 100% behind him, and I know John, he's already working, and he's going to look to beat this thing. So, uh, if you're watching and you're in support of us, please do what you can to show your support for John during this difficult time. He's fighting for your freedom, he's fighting for your kids' freedom, your grandkids' freedom, and what this country is going to look like, and the world is going to look like tomorrow. I keep saying this country because our efforts were focused here, it's, it's where we live. Um, but freedom is something that the entire world should experience. Now, we're just born here on this planet, and I keep hearing about this social contract, but I didn't sign anything. And quite frankly, the social contract as it exists today, I would not sign it, because it wouldn't make sense for anybody to sign it. Don't tell me we're all in this together when we clearly are not, okay? Uh, that's my piece. That's my spiel. Like I said, I, I don't think we should spend a lot of time on this. We'll move on. Um... Unless you have anything to add. I just think the whole situation's fucked and it's like someone's out there to prove a point, you know. Uh, yeah. That's what it is. I mean, like you said, what's the point if, of locking the guy up? They're looking at, what, 30 years, they're saying. What's the point? What will that achieve? And the guy, as you said, has paid more tax in his lifetime than most people make in their lifetime. So, come on. Sometimes you've got to weigh the good between the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. And there's something called compassionate ground. It's like, all right, maybe you did or you didn't, but if you didn't, you at least did this, mm -hmm. which outweighs our current problem with you now. But fuck, one thing this planet lacks is common sense, and it's not that common, unfortunately, but... That's a terrible word. I, 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 every time I catch my... I do it too. This is not a criticism, but every time I catch myself using that word, I try to bite it off. Because common sense is not common anymore. There is no fucking sense in the mass of people that live on this planet anymore. Uh, because most of them support what we have. And most of them support even more restrictions and regulations on people and telling people how they can live their lives so that we can keep things nice and perfectly safe for this very small cluster of people, for the 1%. That's what this is all for. Uh, it, it's not for you and it's not for me. We can all just eat shit and we're here to serve you know, our masters. And the ones that get uppity, well, you see what happens to them. Now, this, this, is, this, is, this is an old story. This is a continuing story. And this is the story of the disintegration of the human condition. Um, and like you said, something as simple as compassion. You have a man in his 70s who, who's done more for the public good in his life than most people. Um, and you would think this would dawn on somebody, but nope. We have prosecutors that need to na make a name for themselves. Uh, we have governments that want to make an example out of people that decide to flout their stupid rules. Um, and so the, the show continues. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what else can be said. I, I could not express my dissatisfaction with our society, and I don't think in stronger words, uh, without becoming extremely vulgar and turning people off. So I'm not going to do that. But we're not in this together. Okay, people? Mm. We're not in it together. Okay? We're not. Mm. Uh, it's just one more thing, though, about John. Um, not too long ago, I spoke to him. I actually asked him for some advice because I was in a bit of a pickle with something, trying to make a decision. And his last words he said to me was, follow your heart. That's all you need. Just follow your heart. Sometimes yep. it's not always about thinking with your head. It's about following your heart. Another example of how that impacted me since then, earlier this week, I did a non-crypto because <coughs> I had no fucking crypto news to report. No crypto news. I thought I can either report boring, irrelevant news, but my heart was telling me, do something different for one night. 
because his words echoed in my head, man. Sometimes it's what something someone says that can have an impact on your life, big or small. So I did it, and it turned out to be a fucking awesome episode. Otherwise, I would have had a fucking boring, irrelevant episode. But that's yeah, all, all I want to say on the matter. Like, I, I thought I thought irrelevant was your stock and trade. Was it? Isn't irrelevant part of your right? I thought you do irrelevant. Oh, irrelevant. Dude, the news was so irrelevant. Even <laughs> I couldn't stand to read it, man. Let alone present it. And I thought, you know, John's words echoed in my head again. You know what? Fuck it, man. I'll just wing it. Follow my heart. Did it. Turned out sweet. You know, interesting, weird, weird news stories. It was all about weird non-crypto news stories. Yeah. Like some bitch in Slovenia that cut off her hand trying to do insurance fraud and they caught her out. Um, 20-year-old chick. Yeah. She cut off her hand deliberately. She, a, a year prior to cutting it, she signed up with like five insurance companies. Then she made a deal with her partner and her partner's father to cut off her hand. They took her to hospital. She said that she did it by accident, cutting branches. They deliberately left her hand at home so it would not get reattached. So she can get $1.6 million payout. And the fact that they left the hand to rot at home and didn't bring it to the hospital was a red flag straight away. And they did an investigation. They reattached her hand, by the way. They actually reattached it. And then they checked what internet searches she'd been doing, blah, blah. And, and they saw um, hydraulic hands. They were looking up hydraulic hands. <laughs> Before the, the accident, not after, before. And um, I thought maybe the boyfriend was trying to think, oh, yeah, what would it feel like to get a hand job with a hydraulic hand? But, um, yeah, man, they left a trail of evidence behind them, and she ended up going to jail. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's yeah, That was one story. That was one article from that episode I did the other day. It's weird news from around the world, dude. That's quite a scheme, uh, you know, and, and I, I know that the, uh, the knee-jerk response in, in our culture is to say, oh, wow, you look at these fraudsters and these criminals, and, and you know what, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't look at it that way. Uh, what I see is a desperate person in a world that's de de basically been designed to make sure that the little guy stays down. Because, you see, the elites have this problem, and if the guy that picks up the garbage <laughs> makes too much money... All of a sudden, he don't want to pick up the garbage no more, right? Well, why would you want to pick up the garbage if you got a million dollars in the bank? So you, so you don't. So we have to make sure that people yeah. stay in their low station so that they can do all these things that, that the elite don't want to do. And, and it, it, exactly. so everything has been designed. You know the drill, man. You know what, what life is for the, for the little guy. Life for the little guy is as soon as you yep. can lay your hand on a dime, oh, you work for a company. That's great. Oh, the company gave you a bonus. Well, we're going to come and take half of that away from you. And, and you know, oh, and now mm -hmm. your car's going to break down and that's going to take some more. And then, oh, we noticed there were some administrative fees because you didn't give us that money fast enough, and we're now we're going to take even more of that from you. And, and there's a reason for it all. The reason is to make sure that you don't ever move from your low station. So when I see somebody that's sick of it, I fully understand where they're coming from. And I understand that they're going to have yeah. to do things in this system that maybe people aren't going to like. Because it's the only way to say, mm. I'm not going to be a shit piddling fucking little piece of shit like they want for my whole life. I'm not going to waste my life serving the system just because that's what that's what's going to make you happy. And I have a lot of sympathy for that position. I'm, I'm sorry I do. Well, bro, there's 24 hours in a day. The standard average working time is eight hours a day. Standard, right? Nine to five, seven to three, eight to four, whatever. Right? Eight mm. hours of that day goes to slaving it out for somebody else, making yep. them money while yep. you receive a portion of the large amounts you're making them, then you, you go home, average time to sleep, scientifically, eight hours is the recommended. So you've got 16 hours lost to sleep and to work, giving you eight hours to do other things like shop, leisure, have sex, whatever, play games. But it's not the full eight hours. You get the full eight hours at work, you get the full eight hours of sleep, but the rest, that's to you, you do not get the full eight hours because... You're spending half an hour, maybe an hour, getting ready for, to go to work. And then when you get home, another half an hour getting changed, shower, winding down from work, right? So you're actually spending more time. You're dedicating more time than eight hours to work lifestyle. Mm. You're dedicating nine to ten because it includes travel time as well to work. So mm -hmm. shower, breakfast, get ready, groom up, drive to work. 
it, it, it's sacrificing. You're losing, on average, 10 hours a day because of a job. Mm-hmm. And what little time does that give you to live life in oh, well, between that and sleep? Sacrifice is the word of the day, wait, wait. dinner. Sacrifice is the word of the yeah, day, wait, wait. Prepare dinner. Yeah, by the time you prepare dinner, by the time you watch the news, you got, seriously, what, two hours a day to yourself after yeah. all that, after the work, sleep, yeah. and dinner shit? That's fucked, bro. Well, here's a tip. You can get and some of that. You can get some of that time back. You can get some of that time back by not watching the news because <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing worth watching there anyway. Um, but yeah, I hear you. You're absolutely yeah, but on right. On top of that, man, a, a, a quarter of your. On top of that sacrifice you make, a quarter of your wage goes to tax. Huh. On top. Mm-hmm. So you, you get. You you pay income tax. You pay tax to keep it in the bank. You pay tax to withdraw the money. You then pay tax to spend the money. You need fuel to go to the shops to spend that. So you pay the tax on fuel. You've paid tax 10 fucking times from the moment you get paid to the moment you spend it. Every yep. time. Yep. Every fucking time. Yep. It's sickening, mate. If they're going to yep. tax you on goods and services, withdrawal fees and all these bullshit, don't have an income tax. Yeah. We're it's already double, paying tax it, 10 times. Double, triple, quadruple dipping. This is the specialty. This is where it's a gone because it's been one thing piled on top of the next. Nothing's been designed with a top-down view. Everything's just been piled one on top of the next. People accept it because each time it's this little change. It, it's, it's, it, it is the old adage of boiling a frog where, you know, you slowly turn up the heat and before you know it, you're in this pot of boiling water and you don't know how it happened. Well, th- this, is, this is where we all are. We're in this pot of boiling water, you know, and that's a hundred years of tiny little bills that said, oh, we have this great idea and we're going to fund it with this new tax. And, you know, that was the bad habit to begin with. It used to be that if you wanted to build a bridge, you raised money for the bridge. And if you wanted to even put an army regiment in the field, somebody had to raise that fucking regiment. They had to pay for it and they had to make it work. Mm -hmm. If you wanted something in a community, you took up a collection and you got it built. That's the way you run a society. That's cooperation <clears throat> rather than subordination. What people call cooperation these days is not cooperate. They say, oh, well, you should cooperate with us. What you really mean is I should subordinate myself to you, and I should subordinate my interests to yours. That's what you mean when you say I should cooperate. Yep. And that's almost every time that I hear somebody use the word, they're using it wrong. Cooperate means cooperate. Co. We're at the same level. We're both providing input, and we're both you know, determining the direction. This is not cooperation. So you ask for my cooperation. You're asking for me to bow down. That's what you're asking for. Exactly. And I have worked on my life, many different jobs, right? And Same here. In all my years, the way I look at work, and I don't see how anyone can argue my point here, work is a form of paid slavery. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's yep. paid slavery, that's it. I've seen people in workplaces doing their jobs and they do it well. Then the boss comes over to them, sees a bit of rubbish at his feet, the boss's feet, and he'll call the poor dude working his ass off from 10 meters away. Come here, pick that up. Go yep. fuck yourselves, cunts. Go fuck yourselves. I, I swear to God, I, th- I remember thinking to myself, if he ever speaks to me like that, oh, the hell is going to break loose. But um, I didn't last very long in that place anyway, so he didn't get the, he didn't get the privilege to speak to me like that. But yeah. just seeing him do it to someone else infuriated me, dude. Yeah. Infuriated me. You know? Yep. So you, you, you get these people in positions of power that shouldn't be in it, that don't have the education or the experience, but they've been there long enough that they sucked ass so long and spent Sundays with the boss's families that they got that position. Yeah? Yep. And these are unprofessional workplaces. And these are the reasons why businesses get sued today because of conduct like that. Workplace harassment, workplace bullying. And seriously, bro, like I said, I've been working on my life. I've seen it all. And I don't want a bar of it anymore, dude. I do not want a bar of someone else's business, anyone's. You know, it's everybody watching. You should focus on working on, for yourselves and make yourselves rich, not some prick who doesn't appreciate what you do. Eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, sacrificing your life, 40 hours a week, just to make ends meet from week to week. Or not. Do something with your lives. Or, no, or not. Or not. Because try. there's plenty of people who can't even make ends meet doing that. 
Exactly. So some people need two jobs. That's fucked, right? Unfortunately, two, that's fucked. Three. And they get sick, illnesses. Yep. Yeah, they get illnesses and health problems down the line. Uh, mental illness even as well. Depression, suicides. That shit's fucked. So everybody watching, you might think you love your job working for somebody else, but there's going to come a point somewhere in the future where your su superiors are going to piss you off and everything's going to turn around for you in one moment, in one day. While you're in a job, if you are working, take the opportunity to think about what you're going to do next with your lives. Do something for yourselves, not for others. You could be on a wage of $15 an hour for a company that's turning over $10 million an hour. Yeah? Which side of that do you want to sit on? Start thinking about yourselves, your future, work for your own self. That's it. Your own interests. That's it. And for those who are not working, you've got plenty of time to think about it. So that's my spiel, Rob. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm sure it'll meet a, a lot of uh, receptive ears. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of our audience is the little guy, and I think they can appreciate that. It, it can be difficult for me to talk about sometimes in, in the circles that I run in, because, you know, before you know it, you start sounding like a, a leftist, um, which I'm really not. Um, but, uh, you know, to say that they don't have some points about some things, it would be silly, because they do. Uh, where, where I break with the leftists is their solutions. Uh, their solutions is more government, their solutions is more more oppression, and, and their solutions is taking more of your money. And they want to say this is a good thing because they have moral reasons behind it. And I say, well, you know, let's go back a step, let's look at some of your complaints, and let's find other ways to solve them because the way that you want to solve them impedes my sovereignty and it impedes my ability to live a free life. So I, I, I can't sign on to that, okay? But... You are, you know, realize who you're talking to. I want to solve those problems. Our, 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 our world is not set up well. I'm not going to argue that point, but that's because it was never set up. This has been organically growth. We all used to be serfs, you know. You couldn't even leave the fucking land that you lived on without permission from, from the Lord. I mean, we're going back in that direction, unfortunately. It's, it's getting back to that point. Um... The answer to it, however, is not to increase the power of the government. And this is why I don't understand, you know, my, my friends on the left all talk about good government. I have yet to see it. And what I see is people, as soon as they get a position of power, looking to crush other people with that power. Um, and, and, and now... Yeah, man, power the, tripping. Yeah. And in the United States, all those people on the left are now seeing what happens when you build up this wonderful, powerful infrastructure. And now somebody you like, come, you don't like comes and takes control of it. Now they're getting a big taste of that. You would think it would have curbed some of their enthusiasm for these large collections of power everywhere, but it doesn't seem to have. They keep demanding more and bigger institutions, and, and that's why I can't sign on to their program. I, I don't believe in running the world that way. I, I, I don't believe in running the world. So this is just a planet with people, and we're all trying to live. And unfortunately... The, all of these institutions are what makes it hard. It's not each other. It's not the people we meet on a day-to-day -day basis for the most part. Yeah, yeah. okay, fine. Mm. There are violent and dangerous people among us. They can be dealt with. But it's when you create all this other noise that they slip through the cracks because you're so busy chasing down a 76-year-old man over money. Okay? So you, you wanted to tell me about, oh, well, there's murderers on the street. and they're Well, how about if you use those police resources for a good use and actually pick up rapists murderers, pedophiles, well, we can't do that because that's all the fucking 1%, so you know we can't why? pick them up. Do you know why? Because they they have nothing to take from them financially from pedophiles and rapists. And oh, 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 the, no, 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 no. The pedophiles are, are, the, are in the 1%, so they have plenty to take from financially. They just won't do it, okay? We know who's running the children all over the world, and it's powerful people. It's not fucking some dipshit in his garage doing it. And if it is, he's the lowest guy on the fucking chain. That's the, you know, where the rubber meets the road. That's fine. The people running the shit are so big that they can't be taken down. Law enforcement won't go near the real criminals of this world. They won't touch them with a 10-foot stick. Mm. And then they expect people like me to say, well, I mean, I have all this respect for you. Well, no, I don't. I do not. Yeah, it's...
It's just fucked, man. Oh, well, you know, what else are we going to do for Crime Wednesday? Oh, we got another guy in trouble. That's Arthur Hayes from BitMEX. BitMEX CEO Arthur Hayes, and I'll go right on the record as saying I'm not a big fan of their product or services, but uh, Arthur Hayes nonetheless is, well, well, now found himself facing jail for AML violations. Well, there's a good one. He didn't ask people their name. What a shame. Um, oh. The, uh, uh, who, who went after him here? Uh, that was the C. FTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission, has filed a civil suit. So that's civil, but I believe, ah. if, yeah, but I believe that there is either criminal charges waiting in the wings or have I already. Say, how could he go to jail for a civil suit? He can't because there's additional charges. There are criminal charges as well. And that's ah, coming okay. from the FBI. Yeah. So it's two sets of things. Honestly, bro, um, I have not looked into this story at all because I saw it getting reported a lot over the weekend, and that's when we took two days off. The mm -hmm. weekend is it's where Sundays to Thursdays, right? We don't work the channel in between, and that's when all the news came out about BitMEX. I thought, oh, everyone's reported it now. I don't know what's going on. I've read the headlines, and everyone's reported it, so I'm not going to touch it. So I never actually looked into it, but I kept seeing these headlines. Um, now, to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, were U.S. traders banned from registering an account on BitMEX? Is that correct? Yeah, and, and a, lot of this, a lot of this is timing, and it seems like some of this is tied to a period of time before that was the case. So before they prominently said that we're not accepting U.S. applications, but they are also saying that even after they said that on the site, they knew people were connecting with via VPNs and they didn't make any effort to stop them. I was going to say that next. Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking maybe that's why they're in trouble now because people it's both. have access via VPNs. It's both. Mm -hmm. they, they, according to this, they're saying it's both. So it's the period of time before they were actively blocking US users. And then after they started blocking, they still have additional complaints saying, well, you didn't do enough because people were still using your service and you knew it. And that's not going to be a, a, a point of speculation. I'm sure that they're in discovery that they will see that they have emails or, or something demonstrating that they did know this. I mean, that's, you know. Just try to remember why, why the U.S. people were blocked. Was it because of the leverage trading on the exchange? Was it something else? I can't I, remember. I, I, you know, I, again, I have not, I'm, I'm not a fan of, of, of the, um, the BitMEX model, so I haven't followed them closely. I don't know what they gave as their reason, um, you know, for for doing that. They would have had enough reason to just say, you know, due to regulations, which is probably all they did. Why get specific? Um, you know, and people are, are concerned about the bottom line, which is we're telling you you can't use our service. Unfortunately, if it was done in such a way where, you know, uh, you can't use our service, wink, wink, I hope you don't have a VPN, wink, wink, um, you know, uh, the uh, law enforcement uh, is staffed with people and, and human beings, not robots. And so they, they are able to detect a dog whistle just as well as anybody else. So if you're oh, dog yeah. whistling to your users, oh, well, you can't connect with us. And I hope you don't do it with a VPN. They know what that means. And then they're not stupid. So it seems like there was some of that going on. Um, you know, Arthur Hayes was, was uh, active on Twitter he may be regretting some of the tweets that he sent out during that period of time. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, basically, what, again, what we have is regulations, and a lot of it seems to focus on money laundering. Now, what's interesting is we just had all of these banks that just got caught uh, facilitating money, money laundering all over the world. Big Chase, J.P. Morgan, a, a bunch of big names. I'm not aware of anybody that's been criminally charged in those banks. And, and again, this is this goes back to my point a few moments ago. Off. Yeah, uh, my point a few moments ago. They won't. Law enforcement doesn't go after the people that matter. <clears throat> and so, you know, to, to ask me to say have some respect for this when when no, absolutely not. It does not apply equally to people. So they're going to go after him for violations. I'm sure those banks processed a lot more money, and that that money was a lot more dangerous because it was in the form of cash money that could be easily used. OK, and none of those people are on their way to jail. Yeah. So, you know, you tell me how that's fair. You tell me how that's justice. It's not. There is none. It's not. No.
Mm -hmm. It's the way of the world, my friend. Like, yep. Money talks and bullshit walks. <coughs> Unfortunately but for the rest of us, on that, this points to increasing regulation for you know the, the rest of the industry, and it shows the direction that they're heading in. Um, this will probably not be the last case that you see like this. Well, you know what else is bullshit and unfair? And this is a true fact. Sumo wrestlers make babies cry for good luck. That's fucked. They make them cry for good luck. So what do they do? Fart in their faces and make them cry? Like, how do they make them cry? Do they hit them? Sumo wrestlers make babies cry for good luck. Actually, how does that fact. give you good luck? Fact. It's not that fun. It's just a fact, actually. Yeah, that's not fun at all. How, how, do they, how, do they, how, do they, how does that give you good luck? All right, let me, let me, let me uh, dwell into this fun fact a little bit. While most parents do what they can to prevent or stop their babies from crying, that's not always the case in Japan. That's because it's a 400-year-old Japanese tradition that if a sumo wrestler can make your baby cry, it means he or she will live a healthy life. Go figure, a sumo wrestler with a healthy life. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go figure. During a special ceremony, parents hand over their infants to sumo wrestlers who bounce their precious tots up and down and sometimes even roar in their little faces to get the tears flowing. And then there's a quote here. He's not a baby that cries much, but today he cried a lot for us, and we are very happy about it, said one mother during an wow. event. Wow. <clears throat> well, you know, uh, Darko, here's again a situation where I get no guidance from the left. Uh, and on one hand, they tell me that, oh, well, we need to respect others' cultural traditions. But on the other hand, you know, <laughs> there's this sense that child abuse is wrong. So which is it? Which one do I apply to the situation? Do I respect like the their bankers, cultural bro. traditions? Hey, just like the bankers, just like the bankers you mentioned earlier, it's double standards. That's yeah, what, what, what am I supposed to do here? I don't even know how to approach that. And, and before we move on to some more relevant crypto news, I've got one more fact. I have to read this one out to you, dude, because I find this amazing. I think you will too. You ready for this shit? Hmm. A human could swim through a blue whale's veins. Hmm? Who's the person how that's recording? That? Who's, re who's recording all of these facts, and how did they come to that determination? That's what I uh, want to know. I actually, I tasked Roland, our engineer, to get a bunch of facts put together for us for the show, so we can read them th randomly through the show. So, um, if you have any further queries on them, you'll have to contact our engineer, Mister Roland. Well, I'd rather not uh, do that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, some, some crypto news because I think we've only we've only done one article, haven't we? So far, no, we, no, no, no. We've done two. <laughs> we've done two. Two? We're, yeah, we're, oh, yeah, we're we on, see, yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're on track. We're good. But why don't you give us our third, and then we can de deflect the topic oh, away right. from Roland because I, I prefer to do. I don't even want to. I I'd rather not hear that name. I'm looking forward to his checkpoint conference because I, I there are some things we need to discuss, but. Please go on. Yeah, especially after his recent performance issues. Anyway, yeah. um, so I've got an article here. Regulation is coming to DeFi, but can it be enforced? So this might be, um, I'm just thinking this might have anything to do at all with BitMEX, but I don't think so, actually, because I don't think BitMEX has any DeFi implementations into their platform. So... Blockchain analytics company CoinFirm recently unveiled a new anti-money laundering tool. Why does it keep going back to this? I'm not even reading this article, man. It keeps, everything's going back to this shit. Same topic. So, next. Um, this country accepts more retail crypto transactions than anywhere else in Latin America. And guess what? It's our friends in Venezuela again. Um, we Venezuela. The, the satellite. Remember well, that's, week, that's no the surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Crypto must be really kicking off over there, dude. Um, because, because their economy has have, been, uh, their economy was sent into the shitter by the United States. That's why. But I want well, to, uh, 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 you no, know, to be fair, to be fair, by a combination of the United States and, and, and rabid socialism. So it, it was a one, two punch. Hmm. But I, I'm just actually, oh, okay. So the most of the transactions that are being performed 
are actually Bitcoin. Mm. Surpri- that's actually surprised to me. So I thought that might be a bit too expensive for them, transaction fee-wise. Um, so well, uh, some of that's going to do. I mean, if you don't America. have a choice, if you don't have an option, and, and if your vendors, you know, if that's what they're going to take, and, and you're looking for a way to, to buy things with money that's holding its value, um, as the Venezuelan money is not, uh, I could see why Bitcoin might be. You know, it was the first. It was the biggest, and it might be most saturated there in terms of actual use. What's going to be important? These are not investors in Venezuela. These are people looking to live and looking to move money around so that they continue to live a semi-normal life. Uh, So they're going to want to transact in something that people are going to accept. So I I would not expect to see a large altcoin um, usage in that profile. They're going to have to settle on one standard, and there's no surprise that it's Bitcoin. You might have people that are unhappy about the fees as of late, um, but do they have much of a choice? I'm not sure that they do, because, you know, to, to, to get all of the people that have, uh, first of all, wrapped their head around accepting Bitcoin to now wrap their head around accepting something else is a process, and it's not something that's going to happen overnight. But it goes on, and this is really interesting, because I did not know this. A recent study showed that Latin America represents 7% of the entire global cryptocurrency economy, right? Out of that segment, Mexico has captured almost 11% of all retail crypto payments since July 2019. Hmm. Go figure, right? Yeah, that's surprising. I I, I would have thought that the percentage weight would have been on the side of Brazil, but... uh... Yeah, that's interesting. But um, well, a lot of tourism in Mexico, and, and I guess maybe know, people well, there are interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent. And you know what else is interesting? Um, you know what else is interesting? Hmm. The the tea bag was an accidental invention. <laughs> yeah, which, which tea bag? Just yeah, at the actual tea bag. Um, in nineteen oh eight, a merchant the the, the was, act of the weird? act of tea bag the act of tea bag the act of tea yeah not the sexual one when you dip your balls in a chick's mouth I'm I'm talking about a cup of tea tea bag yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh okay now we're on the same page I understand what you're trying to say yeah so um. <laughs> Many of the recipients assumed that the bags were supposed to be used in the same way as metal infusers, so they put the entire bag into the teapot rather than emptying out its contents, and hence the tea bag was created mm. outside of the bedroom in the kitchen. Mm. I, I believe the act of tea bagging was also accidentally discovered, um, and probably during a, a, ma- <laughs> a marital spat. <laughs> well, I just, uh, there's got to be some way to shut you up. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a second. That actually feels good. You know what? <laughs> we're going to do this more often, sweetheart. And what were we fighting about anyway? Shit, world peace. <laughs> this is fucking fantastic. Yeah, honey, would you like milk with your tea down there? <laughs> yeah, and, and so now now we get into one of my major beefs with the right wing, okay? And everybody says, oh, yeah, you, you trash on the leftists. I'm just as happy to trash on the right wing people. And what is it with you people and not wanting other people to have sex? Why the fuck do you hate sex so much? Why do you hate people enjoying their bodies and I the pleasures it. it offers so much? You really think God is going to be standing there with a fucking question for you when you get to the afterlife? Are you that stupid? Just let people do whatever the hell they it's want. They what the fuck is wrong with you people? It's because they can't get it. That's why. Well, but many, well, many of them this can. This is be a, of a little bit of a. This will be a little bit of a concern to you. One more quick fun fact before we proceed: almost one hundred sixty-three thousand pints of Guinness are wasted in facial hair every year. Hmm? That's enough reason to shave, just for that reason, so you don't waste beer. On your beard. Mm. 163,000 pints of Guinness are wasted in facial hair each year, dude. And, and the rest of it's wasted in drinking. Yeah, but imagine. I, 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 I was never a fan. I, I like dark beers. I always found Guinness to be a little weak and uh, watery. So I, I, I was never a big fan of their product. But uh, 
Uh, I know that my Irish friends will be uh, up in arms if they hear me say that. I'll probably get 15 phone calls after this show airs. What the fuck are you talking about? It's the best beer in the entire world. Yeah, okay, fine, sure, it is, great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, fucking so syrup. All right, here we got another one with more, more legal action against mm. cryptocurrency. Yeah, it doesn't end, Darko, but this one's a little different. It's not targeted at people. It involves the entire mm. country of the UK. And actually, you know, what's sad is, is from a practical standpoint, you know, here's one of those situations where I'm torn, okay, because I happen to to dislike what's being banned here. But I don't think it should be banned. I just dislike it. Um, the FCA, uh, I guess, is an organization in uh, in uh, in uh, England, UK, right? FCA. They're calling themselves the Financial Conduct Authority, but I will always know the FCA is the Ferengi Commerce Authority. So that's the way I'm going to read this. Uh, the Ferengi Commerce Authority uh -huh. bans crypto derivatives for retail consumers in the UK. So they're saying uh, that at people who have already purchased the derivatives are allowed to keep them for the time being and for the foreseeable future. So they're not going and taking things away from people or confiscating them or saying they're worthless. But a lot of people are selling them because confidence has been lost in the ability for that money to be safe. They're saying going forward, nobody can sell derivatives. And if you want to invest in an asset, you have to purchase the asset itself. Now, I personally believe that derivatives are partially responsible for the lack of price action we've seen on a lot of the uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. So, you know, for me, I think derivatives just hold the market back. You're trading in something that isn't real. Um, you, you haven't assumed any of the risks. I don't see why you should get any of the benefits. Uh, so I, I don't like them. On the other hand, that doesn't mean that they should be banned. People that do like them should be allowed to buy them. Um, and this is just another silly bit of, of regulation. He considers these products, the uh, Fer Ferengi Commerce Authority considers these products to be ill-suited for retail consumers due to the harm they pose, asserting they cannot be reliably valued by retail consumers because of the inherent nature of the underlying assets, the uh, prevalence for market abuse and financial crime in the secondary market, cyber theft, uh, extreme volatility in crypto asset price movements. So here again is this nursery school mentality for these people who want to turn the entire planet into one big fucking nursery school. Oh, yeah, that fork's not safe. Put it down, Timmy. That fork's not safe. You can't pick that up. Instead of saying people can make their own choices. You want to know the, the thing about freedom, Darko? The thing about freedom is that it allows people to make bad choices. And there's a whole segment of the population that's not comfortable with this. And we see this in the way some people parent their children. We see this in the way people approach the law and government and how we manage a society where all the people in it can get along with each other and not kill each other. And their answer is to say, we need to just turn this planet into one giant fucking nursery school. A big fucking bubble where nobody can get hurt. You people need to go fuck yourselves. Why don't you grow a pair and get used to real fucking life? So that, and stop getting in the way of other people trying to do what they want to do. It, it, it's funny you said all that. It's funny you said all that because it's an awesome segue into my next fun fact. And I don't know if you even know this. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But my next fun fact, coming off of what you did, everything you just said, silly regulations and let people live their lives and whatever. Ohio DUI offenders, for those who don't know, drinking under the influence offenders in Ohio, must use yellow license plates. Mm. Did you know mm. that? No. No, I did not. That's embarrassing. Yo, that's yo, embarrassing. yeah, no. And that's a, a what, what, a, what, a, what a great choice of color. What, what a wonderful fucking choice. You know, they keep making this yeah. choice, and I, I, it's hard to imagine it's by accident. Yellow, that's the color that they had the stars for the concentration camp people wear so that they could identify themselves as Jews. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice that we're doing that again? Let's tag people as yeah. they walk around in public. Well, that worked out great the first time. So that would be embarrassing in front of those people who know what it means, and it's also bad because every time... You drive in front of a cop car with that yellow plate. Oh, forget oh, it. Ah, drinking under the influence. Let's check this guy every time. Yeah, Put him over, yeah. breathalyzing. Let's see if he's been drinking again. Yep. That's you might, fucking under this plan. Me, uh, under that plan, you might as well turn in your fucking license. I mean, what are you going to drive around like that with a target on yeah. your back? Yeah, really. Exactly. Exactly.
All right. All right. Good job, people. Hey, round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause for all these fucking assholes. Round of applause for all these people who just can't cope with the fact that life has risks. Round of applause for you. You're, you're really, you're succeeding in your plan of getting us all, the rest of us, under the yoke of your thumb so that we can't do anything. Congratulations. It's humanity progressing, isn't it? We're really... Progress. This is progress. Hi. This is progress. Yeah. It's fucking bullshit. But moving along... I don't know if we're going to be able to air this show, Darko. I mean, this is just... Where are we going to be by the end? I don't fucking know. I think we're having a really fucking good show tonight, actually. Yeah, we're, we're having really a lot of fun. Show, dude. I just busted my knuckles. Yeah, it's... And people, to the people watching, this is what we're talking about when we say sacrifices. Rob just sacrificed his knuckles for you. So to make him happy and bleed less from the heart due to his actions, please subscribe, like, share, retweet this episode and spread the word with your wonderful promotion. And we'll continue to bring you relevant and irrelevant crypto news every Wednesday is 9 p.m. EST time. It's how we survive. It's what we thrive on. Yeah. Okay. And, and here I'm going to, I'm going to surprise our audience, our regular viewers who, who are you, right? I'm not going to even bust on you for saying that. Instead, instead, what I'm going to do is take the tea that you gave me and I'm going to do a little golf swing and, and just explain something to the people really quick. Okay. Because it's another confusion that I see over and over and over again, and it's causing a lot of problems. Okay. Now, Darko referenced my sacrifice. I just busted my knuckles to make a point. It was my sacrifice, and I made it voluntarily. The, uh, that's the only way you can make That's what a sacrifice is, people. A sacrifice is a voluntary act. And all of a sudden, I see all over, everywhere, that you can find public opinion, be it Twitter, be it Facebook, be it talking to people or whatever, have come to believe that a sacrifice is something you can impose on people. You need to make this sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice, okay? A sacrifice is a voluntary act. I have decided that something is important to me, and therefore I'm going to give of myself to it. Okay? Not you tell me what I need to sacrifice. That's called dictatorship. Okay? I was about Get to it say straight, that. you yeah, fucking yeah. numbnuts. The fuck is wrong with you people? The, <clears throat> I was about to say the exact same thing, dude. If someone dictates to you that you must make this sacrifice, or well, that sacrifice, that's exactly that, dictatorship. It's orders. It's, it's orders. It's not a sacrifice. Punishment. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It, no, it, I'm it, seeing that a lot around my area. Yep. Yep. You need to make the second. No, I don't. No, I don't. And if you want me to, maybe you want to adopt a less adversarial stance towards me and have a discussion and find out, you know, in, in the way that people have always cooperated, it's a give and take. And find out what it'll take to make something important to me. Okay? Otherwise, fuck off. It's not for you to say what sacrifices other people should make. You want to talk about nursery school? This is simple shit. This is shit you should have learned in nursery school. This is basic stuff. I'm amazed that I even have to say this. <laughs> yeah, but people still need to be reminded, dude, constantly. Yeah, well, uh, reminded because they're all manipulated good. into the system. People yeah. are manipulated into the system. Uh, oh well, let's just keep it moving. Uh, we got another. We got another bit of news here, and this one's not related to regulations. This one is related to the world yeah. and our president, oh. Mr. Trump, President Trump, as people don't like calling him, um, and uh, he has delayed stimulus checks and apparently bitcoin dumped shortly thereafter so all of these people looking yes. to take their stimulus payment as they did the last time mm -hmm. and go and dump it into bitcoin had their plans foiled and instead a lot of them realized shit i better sell some of that bitcoin and, and i'm sure some of that money <clears throat> coming out was money that went in with the last stimulus check and now people are at the point where they say all right you know what i gotta cash some of that out because the next one's not on its way yeah, we discussed this back then uh, during the last or after the last stimulus check came out and the price had a significant jump with all the deposits being made straight after that check was processed. Yep. So, uh, and everyone was expecting the same thing as soon as 
an official date was to be released for the next stimulus package, which, as you just said, it's been delayed now. And I think it – did you say or did I read somewhere um, Trump is delaying it until after the election? Or, you probably you, you probably read it somewhere, but let me just take okay. a look here. Uh, I do have something yeah, to say. Yeah, about, um, yeah. After the after, election. After the election, yes. So, when's the election? When's the election? Uh, well, that's a great question. Uh, we have election day. Maybe. Yeah, we have election day, but this year especially, there's been this thing with mail-in ballots, and those who need to be counted. Mm. Uh, who knows when we get a result? Um, the election's in November, election day, when, when a number of people will go out and vote, but these ballots are going to continue coming in. You know, who knows when they call it, but more importantly... The turnover, if there is one, doesn't happen until January. Now, if Trump is reelected, um, he just continues in office, so that January date becomes less important. But if it's if it was Biden that was elected, he won't gain uh, the office until January. I, I must say something though about Trump. I'm actually quite disgusted with some of the comments I'm seeing on like Twitter and shit when he got diagnosed with COVID and people wishing him really wishing him unwell. I mean, that's just not part of being human, man. Like, people were wishing death upon the guy. And yeah. that's just not what being human is about, man. Like, yeah. all right, fair enough. If you don't like someone, you don't like someone, you can express that opinion. But to wish death on someone you never met? This is what happens. You see them. This is what this is what this is what happens when you begin making exceptions in your mind to the basic humanity of people. And unfortunately, a segment of the U.S. population has already done so. They've already branded the rest of the population as deplorables. These are people who don't share their vision on where the world should go and, and, and have a mm. different vision of how they want to live life. And rather than just saying that these are people with differences, people with differences, They've now resorted to saying, well, these are deplorable. They are, therefore, outlaws in terms of the social rules that they believe should apply to people, and that, therefore, they don't need to be treated with the basic respect. And you see this justification as these people are being called on their, on their comments. And, and people are saying, you know, that's, that's not really a, a nice thing to say. Well, it doesn't matter because it's Trump and he's hurt so many people. Really? It, it doesn't matter. Uh, so no due process, no, no anything else, no equal justice under the law, no anything else. All of these things that they say are so important go out the window when they're talking about Trump or any of the deplorables. Uh, I've got a real problem with that. Don't tell me you're fucking compassionate and you're all about, you know, compassion and empathy for other people when you have none yourselves. Yeah. But this, I've seen this exactly. for a long time. I know exactly what's going on. This is them showing their true colors. And a lot of these people yeah, use man. compassion as a weapon. They weaponize this compassion, and they're not compassionate people. They use it basically as no. a lever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's one thing to say Trump's a fucking idiot or Trump's a fucking dickhead. That's your opinion. That doesn't bother me. It's like, all right, that's what you think. That's what you think. That's what you think. You're saying it out loud. But to say, I hope he dies, and that's not what you're thinking. That's what you want to see happen. Mm -hmm. That's the difference here. You're, you're manifesting this shit onto someone they forget the guy has a wife. The guy is a, he's a father. Maybe he's a grandfather. I don't know. But he's got family that shit that loves him too, yeah? Like, seriously, man. Some people... Well, just, listen, I, 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 I watched for years as people, people on, on the right side, the right wing of things, destroyed their own souls with this type of behavior. Uh, for eight years, I listened to people saying that Obama needs to be hung. This is not something that's endemic just to the left, okay? This is on both sides. And, and, and it's not a political opinion. This is a deficiency in the human condition, and it manifests uh -huh. itself in people with all variety of political opinions. So, you know, am I going to save a special place in hell for the people saving that with Trump? No, they can share that place in hell with all the people who said Obama needed to be hanging from a tree. I didn't like President Obama any more than I like President Trump, but I never said he should hang from a fucking tree. I don't wish ill on the man personally. I wish he would be, you know, brought to account for the things that he did. There are some <laughs> dead children that I think have justice coming to them from all the drone bombings that he did but i don't believe that he should just die in the street like a dog with without that yeah. due, due process no and that's not so who who are you hurting by having these opinions you're hurting yourself you destroy your own soul and we are watching now as much of the american left is in public view destroying the value of their own souls 
They are trading their own humanity for cheap political victories, and they're doing it again and again and again. This is only the latest example. I, I like how you, how you labeled it. These people have a deficiency. <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. Yep. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't blame them 100%. Uh, I don't blame them 100%. Uh, 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 you know, you, you, you raise a child in a cesspool, and you're going to get a garbage child. And, and unfortunately, a lot of these people I'll grew up in a cesspool. Too. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. you know, I, do I blame them 100%? No, they grew up in this fucking mess, and they're just reflecting what is there. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, I have to look to all the other people who overcome that. People who have had a great personal tribulation. People who have been up against it and maintain their love for humanity, even for people that they disagree with. Okay, I'm one of them. I have. If I told my life story on the fucking, I'm not going to do that because I'm a private person. If I told you my life story, you'd be like, "Fuck, that guy should be like lining up to kill everybody." Okay, but Peter. that's it. You don't Peter. turn away. <laughs> you don't turn away from your fellow human being just because things have happened to you in a way that you don't like, or political systems are set up in a way that you don't like. Now the damage is being done to yourself. Yeah. And if you do otherwise, the opposite to what you just said, then that makes you inhuman. Yep. You know, like I think we're born to be social, compassionate creatures by birth. We're supposed That's to be. part of being human. We're yeah. supposed to be. So, and, and some of us make choices that go contrary to that. And then once we make those choices, we go well beyond, you know, the realm. Um, it, it is what it is. I, 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 I bring it back to, and part of it has to be what you're made of. There's nature and there's nurture, and they both play a role into who we become. But I can't help but notice, and this is something I pointed out to many people over the years. Most of them are quiet after I say it, because there's really not much more you can say. And, and I'll have somebody telling me they want to excuse somebody's bad behavior because they were abused or, or something like that. They say, well, yeah. or, or they want to excuse somebody's bad behavior because they were poor, or they want to excuse somebody's well, bad, bad behavior. Tough life. Whatever it is. And so my immediate point is to point to all of the other people who have gone through similar circumstances who don't go in that direction. People who were, I, as a child, I was mentally abused. And you could take two approaches to react to that. And to me, this is the nature part. This is what you're made of. You either become an abuser and you continue the cycle or you become completely anti-abuse and you make a determination to be a better person to say, I don't like how that felt and I'm going to make sure that I don't do that to the people around me. So now as I raise my child, I'm very careful about the things that I say to her to make sure she always knows that no matter what she does, she is loved and that no matter what she does, I am behind her and that I support her and that she has an environment where she can grow and be nurtured. That is how you respond to abuse. And so... People say, well, you know, we're all just victims of their circumstances. No, part of it is what you bring to the table. And you can subject two different people to the exact same type of abuse. And one of them becomes a monster themselves. And the other becomes, you know, a crusader against abuse. And you want to tell me there's no difference in what those two people are made of? Of course there is. One is better than the other. Yeah, I, I, I know people personally who were addicted to drugs heavily and... They turned their lives around, and what they did was they became drug counselors, you know, and they're helping people now with addictions yep. to get over those addictions. So they yep. could have either taken that path in their life, which they did, or just keep taking the other path and probably end up dead at a young age. You know. Yeah. They've done, studies, they've done studies that show similar psychological tendencies between surgeons and serial killers. And what they have found yeah. is that the – yeah – what they have found this need to mutilate and, and whatever and what they have found is that surgeons are basically the ones who had these drives that put their you know requirements what it is their psycho their psychology demanded towards a positive avenue we're going to i'm going to use that desire wow. to mutilate to help people and to save them and, and that to me is the answer you have the exact same drives you have two different paths that you can take Am I going to use this to hurt people? Am I going to use this to help people? The good people are the ones that chose that path. And can they exist among us? Well, sure, we need surgeons. But, you know, can the others exist among us? No, they cannot. This goes, it, it, it comes back to what we're made of. And unfortunately, it seems that, you know, these days, a lot of people are not made of the right stuff. On More and more, I'm coming to that conclusion. And it's unfortunate. I still respect their basic humanity. 
because I must, because my moral system requires me to. I don't wish death upon them. I, I, I don't, you know, wish horrible things to happen to them, but I do wish they would wake up from their slumber and, and realize that, you know, hurting other people to make cheap, cheap gains is not the way to get through life. There's other ways to do it. Rip off the system. Go do that. I'll, I'll be cheering you all the way. One of the greatest stories of all history is the story of Malcolm McLaren, the Sex Pistols. The guy went and got a couple of dudes and threw them together into a punk band. He had a shop, uh, sex, in the shop made, you know, he may have been able to get a living from that. But instead, he made this outrageous band. And then they went and signed all these contracts with record companies that wanted to exploit them, like they had been exploiting all of the other music acts up till that time. Only what they didn't do was write into the contract an exit clause if the Sex Pistols got too out of hand. And then what happened is the Sex Pistols got too out of hand because that's what they were put there to do. And these record companies said, we can't fucking carry these guys. They're off the hook. And they had to back out of their contracts. And they had to make pay McLaren billions, millions, sorry, hate to exaggerate, yeah. but I just love the fucking story. That's the great rock and roll swindle. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. And so I'll cheer that every fucking day. A guy from the gutter came along and he ripped off the fucking system. That's the way you do it. What you don't do is hurt people. It's funny because all this conversation came from your Trump article. And it didn't digest away. It's all relevant. But it's funny <coughs> how so many topics can be related to that Trump article. And one more thing I want to say about that, I reckon now that Trump's getting better, apparently, from COVID, I can just, I can just envision the speeches saying, I had COVID, it wasn't that bad, anybody can get over it. You'll make it look like it was nothing. <laughs> but I tell you Listen, what, the guy makes for some good television, man. I love watching with, him. With, with the way people have been behaving, that is all that I hope for. I mean, I will always hope for somebody's recovery from an illness. Um, you know, uh, oh, one yeah. of our great enemies is bacteria and viruses, these awful, stupid manifestations of reality that we have to contend with as we try to live our lives. I don't want to see anybody yeah. succumb to that. But in this particular case, I even more hope. I hope he makes the recovery of all recoveries just so all these people can have it stuck in their ass because that's what they fucking need. Yeah, that's what they need. Fucking no. Um Rob, just quickly, what else you got? did you know that a, did you know that a cloud can weigh more than one million pounds? Giggity, giggity. Did you know that? I mean, imagine like a plane flying through a crowd, a, cl crowd, <laughs> a cloud crowd. <laughs> we'll, we'll be there next. We already have cars going through crowds. It, next, it'll be a plane. <laughs> What if we have cars driving through clouds? But you see planes fly through clouds all the time. It, it's just for, when I have these things in my ears, bro, I don't hear myself clearly. Like, you know, in my head, I can't hear my voice clearly with these fucking things in my ear. So mm. I'll say silly things like cloud or crowd, whatever. But, yeah, we, we've all seen planes fly through clouds and that fucking ball fluff weighs a million pounds. Yeah. It's kind of scary, but amazing. If you think about it. You know it. what's scary is how much you look yeah. like an air traffic controller right now. YMCA. Do you know? I do. do you, have yeah. Oh, hey, you love fun facts. I've got a fun fact for you. Don't ask me how I know this. I've got a fun fact for you. Here's a fun fact. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Do you know that the singer from the Village People, okay, YMCA, the Village People, on the album that had that song, the YMCA, he was credited not only with singing the vocals on that on that on that uh, album. He was also credited with playing the footbells. They they saw fit to put on there to make sure that they put on in the credits that in addition to singing he also had bells on his ankles and he was shaking his what feet while he was shit. yeah 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 so he he played the foot bells what? for that song yeah and he's credited for that on the album cover 
That's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is Look, awesome. So people give them a hard time. Ah, hey, you're just a, you know, you're just a candy boy. You're just up there singing what they tell you to sing. No, 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 man. I'm an artist. I play the fucking footbells. You think this shit is easy? Try making footbells sound good. I mean, shit. That's a fucking talent. See, and all this, all this time, all the people who thought the reason why he walked with the limp was because of a sore ass, but it was in fact he, he was wearing footbells. He was, he was wearing <laughs> footbells, yeah. Uh, uh, and another one of those sacrifices, a voluntary sacrifice. Although then again, they work for the record company, so I'm not sure if that was a voluntary sacrifice uh, because they make you turn over your soul. <laughs> or so, you know, Yeah, you, you don't even own your own soul after you work for them. Uh, here, here's another story about regulations, Darko, just to brighten your day. And no, oh I'm not fucking God. with you. No, 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 no. No, Darko, this one's going to brighten your day. I promise you this. Okay. I promise you that you're going to be in the seats promise. cheering in about five seconds. Yeah, this is that's a promise. Okay. I don't make a lot of those. Here we go. Crushing right. regulations could drive Ripple out of the U.S. <laughs> Ooh, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> I, I, I like your new... My nipples are going hard. Yeah, I like, your, I, I like your ideas, and I would like to subscribe to your newsletter. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Ripple is considering re relocating to Europe or Asia amid growing frustration at the lack of regulatory clarity in the United States. Well, as BitMEX had showed you, moving offshore doesn't save you, but uh, in any case, that's yeah. what they're thinking. Uh, they said the United States was woefully behind in preparing for cryptocurrency-based next generation of global financial system. Coupled with the U.S. authorities' policy on regulation through enforcement, Ripple may conceive, consider leaving the country entirely behind so that would mean the united states was in the, the dark ages in terms of ripple usage and was uh, would go completely dark here so are they talking about moving offices only or are they talking about c completely all business like not operate in america anymore is that what this means or well uh, 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 ripple ceo brad <laughs> Yeah, Brad Garlinghouse, that was Garl, yeah, I didn't know his name last week, uh, explain further in a treat, responsible players like Ripple aren't looking to avoid rules, we just want to operate in a jurisdiction where the rules are clear. And listen, you know what, like Ripple or hate it, as I know you do, um, he has a point. And, 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 you know, to just be standing there waiting for somebody with a hammer over your head and say, oh, you know what? We don't like what you did just now, and they're going to hit you with the hammer. That's me. I, who who would be expected to say we can we can uh, live under those circumstances? And that's crypto regulation right now. You can do what you're going to do, and it's anybody's guess whether some agency someplace is going to have a problem with it. That's stupid and absurd. Mm. Yeah, look, dude. In all honesty, I don't have a problem with Ripple. It's XRP. I have a problem with. I mean, uh -oh. Ripple's done some good shit. But mm. it's XRP, and I'm not fucking endorsing him either. I'm just no, saying. I so then next I, week you're gonna come back going, oh, I remember last week you were endorsing Ripple and XRP. And I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've, I've, I've got the clip. Rip, Ripple's done some good things. We're gonna take that out, and we're gonna make a. Oh, fuck uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> you're doomed. You're doomed. Just, just make sure you add the clip of me smashing the egg on my face every time you play it. That's all. <laughs> you, you, you are doomed. You are doomed. Well, you know, let's not. We won't. We won't uh, linger too long on that one. We know you're happy about it. But I feel for them. Uh, it says Ripple, the company. Uh, so I would imagine that would mean their offices and everything else. Uh, I don't think that they would be taking XRP away from holders in the United States. That would be a difficult thing to do. Um, but yeah. the company itself is looking at picking and moving itself up so that they exist elsewhere under some other jurisdiction. And then they're still going to have to be careful about how they do business if they do it in the United States and make sure that nothing hits the shores here because this, this country and this government has shown they have no problem going over overseas to collect people who they feel have violated laws here. Um, you know, it, it, it's not an answer to the problem. An answer to the problem would be something like, you know, closing down the SEC. That would be an answer. Yeah, also, Rob, because <clears throat> we're running out of time. Yeah, we're coming we're up on time. Oh, soon. no. Uh, I have a, my last article, a Bitcoin pioneer predicts a $1 trillion Bitcoin market cap by 2022 or sooner. Uh, that may sound like a crazy figure to some people. It's actually not because I did my calculations. And if Bitcoin did reach a $1 trillion market cap by 2022, it's only a 5x from here. 
So at the moment, Bitcoin's hovering around ten thousand and half, ten thousand dollars roughly. Let's say ten and a half thousand because people are going to start correcting me. So all we need is about fifty five thousand dollar Bitcoin, and it's a one trillion dollar market cap. So mm-hmm. it's not that crazy. It's only five x. Now, no, it, it, Darko, is, Darko verified this. He, it took him a lot of time. He got his stone tablet and chisel out, and he did all the calculations. I did. Mm. I did. And the thing is, though, I love the optimism behind it by 2022, so about a couple of years from now. But I think these same people are also forgetting that Bitcoin hasn't gone above $15,000 for the last three years, dude. And then they're going to expect it to go 5x in, in the next two years. Let's, let's break 20000 first. Let's break and then start talking numbers. It, it, it's you know funny because it's, it's not something that can't happen, but it requires events in the world that we couldn't know now. So it's a strange thing to forecast um, because the, traje- the trajectory doesn't support it if, if we're just moving along, as you said, at the pace that, that we have been. Um, that being said, the possibility of some event or another uh, intervening to cause that is certainly a possibility. And I think that's probably where most of the speculation comes from. You know, they're looking at, at action in the uh, traditional financial markets to drive that price up. Some as of yet unforeseen, or rather, uh, not unforeseen, some of us foresee them, but some unexperienced uh, fallout from all of these stupid economic decisions we've been making this year. Uh, I say we uh, in the most general sense. It's not me, but uh, you, know, you think you just shut everything down and we're going to suffer no economic consequences because we're giving out some stimulus checks. Well, you know, the jury's still out, but I don't think that's going to come back with the answer they like. Now, if these... if the traditional markets and, and the value of traditional assets take a dive, we could well see $55,000 Bitcoin. But what people have to keep in mind is 55000 Bitcoin, $55,000 Bitcoin might be the same in terms of real world value and what you can do with it as $12,000 Bitcoin today. Mm. So if the standard with which you're yeah. measuring against is itself inflated, then, you know, that number becomes less meaningful. So I don't really care if we have $55,000 Bitcoin, if the buying power is the same as $12,000. That's not a, a genuine increase in, in the value. Mm. So if that's the jump that people are looking for, I would tell them to hold their horses because you're not going to be able to use that Bitcoin at $55,000 worth of today's money. It's not going to work like that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Rob, I have one final fun fact for this evening. Oh, yeah. And... <sighs> This one's a good one too. Oh, Roland this found a good one. Wow, wow. I'll give I'll give him a fucking Actually, I he gets found a it. he gets a cookie. I, nah, I found it. I had to go out of my way to look for a good one because the ones he gave me were all shit. So I actually found this one. Not Roland. Oh, so you, you found the good one. Yes, I did. I did. I'm so glad we're paying him. Ready to- yeah, I, this is fucking great. It's only four fifty an hour anyway. Yeah. But uh you ready? It would only take one hour to drive to space. All right. So if you got into your car, turn on the ignition and drove up to the sky at 60 mile per hour, it will take you one hour to reach space. Hey. Well, after the show, I'm going to test that theory. I'm going to get in my car and I'll let you know how long it takes me to get to space. You'll only be successful in that venture if you smoke one of these first and yeah. then jump into the car and drive into space. Otherwise, I see. it won't happen, dude. I don't want to disappoint you, but you, will, you won't reach space without one of these. <laughs> You're saying that if I get in my car after the show, I'm not going to reach space unless I roll up in here. Okay. Well, uh, it, we'll see. Um, yes. uh, we do have one final story in the few minutes that we have remaining. Actually, we're over, so we don't have any remaining, but I'm making a few. <laughs> Just like the money here, you know, well, we need more money. Let's print some more. I, we need more time. I'm going to print some more. That's how it works, right? We just make up our own end time. We, we say we're running out of time, but we don't have an end time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not a lie, Darko, because we are all running out of time. You, me, and everybody. Um, you know, every precious oh, yeah, second that, that ticks yeah, by, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, we're running out. Uh, also running out of time is an Indian man arrested on charges of crypto fraud via, and this is why I picked out this article, his scheme was called Morris Coin. This individual couldn't come up with a more creative name for his uh, scam than Morris Coin. Yes, you're hearing that right. It's a scam he ran in India selling people Morris Coin. Now, 
It's interesting because Morris coin was not. The police said that Morris coin was not listed on any exchanges, making it impossible to exchange the coin. The scheme suggested that investors would be able to exchange Morris coins after the 300 day lockup period. The investors were reportedly promised uh, added benefits <laughs> for bringing more people to deposit funds into the scheme. Oh, no red flag there. <laughs> um, yeah. That sounds bad they, already. They, so if you deposited 15,000 rupees, which is about $200, <clears throat> In 300 days, you'd get a yield of 270 rupees, about $3.60. Um, even the Morris Coin ICO website has no information about team members or developers. No red flag there. And nor does it give any insight into what the project is about. No red flag there. Uh, the, 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 def the defendant, however, claimed that Morris Coin was operating in compliance with the law. So, uh, who, oh, yeah. I guess it depends on who you want to believe. No, he, he's very clear on that point. He was operating in compliance with the law. My beef with the guy, Morris Coin? Really? I mean, could you come up with any less of a fucking Morris Coin? That's like an Indian bloke calling it Ingelbert Coin. Yeah. I mean, like it, when, when a baby comes out of, 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 a, of a woman's vagina in the United States and the parents don't like the look of it, they name it Morris, okay? That's if that's just what happens. So Morris coin, really? Morris coin. They, this guy racked his fucking brain, and the best he could come up with was Morris coin. I mean, I am, you know, that alone, he should be sent to jail for an utter lack of creativity. I mean, really, unless Morris has some secret meaning, not secret, but some meaning that I'm aware of in the Indian vernacular, um, what a terrible, terrible branding uh, an offense against the branding gods, if you will. Um, it just really made me a little bit ill in my stomach when I read it. So he's on his way to jail, as he should be. And um, the Indian police are patting themselves on the back. Another job well done, protecting people from themselves. Maybe he should have called us something more cultural, like masala coin. I mean, we've seen recently all those food coins are selling like hotcakes, like punt intended. Like your sushi swaps and your hot dog and your hamburger ones and your bread bakery, whatever the fuck it was called, bakery coin. I don't know what the fuck it was called. Mm -hmm. So he should have called us something more attractive. He probably would have had a little bit more success in the process. Like yeah. Masala coin or fucking, um, what else do they, do they eat, man? Fucking monkey brain coin or some shit. I don't know. It's funny because, you know, ordinarily I say who would give these people money. And I think, you know, looking at this, now you're saying, as I was reading all of these things off, and I said, no red flag there, no red flag there, obviously what I meant was these were all red flags, and, and yet this man managed to convince people to invest in his scheme. What's interesting is I think one of the things that he did do well, from his perspective, was to kind of know his audience and to be conservative in one aspect, and that was the promised returns. And, and if you look... You know, three dollars and sixty cents on two hundred dollars is not really that out of band. It, it actually seems believable, and I think that's one of the things that that kind of made his scam work is that he wasn't promising, "Oh, you deposit a hundred dollars and I'll give you back five thousand. And people might have said that sounds a little ridiculous, but because his his promises were so modest, he, he might have been able to to take money from people who otherwise wouldn't have given it to him. Mm. Well, he would have had to do it that way, or else he wouldn't have got attention. Well, I mean, uh, oh, yeah. it would have got some attention, but not as much. Well, well I, I tell you, you see, a lot of these scams that we see busted up do promise these pie in the sky, uh, you know, uh, oh, we'll, returns. We'll see it on YouTube, man, on the ads on YouTube. You know, send one thousand dollars of ETH and you get ten thousand dollars back. You know, like, and people still do it. Yeah, and pe people still do it. Now, a lot of those scams, A, they have better branding. I mean, it's hard not to than Morris Coin, but um, it, it, they, they also do better in some of those other areas. A lot of them will put up fake team members or, you know, just it, something there to make it look real. Um, so uh, this guy, he, he fell short in all of those areas, as far as I could tell, but yet he, he limited the promises to more modest, seemingly, you know, realizable goals, and I think that's what helped him. On that note, you just, just gave me a thought, an idea, an innovation. And I have a proposal to make. Yeah? How about next week on the show, 
We do our very first Crypto Degenerates coin review on a coin that I'll just pick at the top of my head. Superior coin. Ah. Review on that. Eh? The very first Crypto Degenerates review. And we can both give our opinions and point things out. And only if you want. I mean, you gave me the idea. I just thought I'll uh, express it. What gave you that idea? Morris coin? Yeah, man. Yeah. And I like it would be nice to once in a while find a shit coin, look into that shit coin, and finally distinguish at the end of the day is it really a true shit coin or is it a hidden gem? Well, I, they've right. just been delisted, so I doubt that there's a hidden gem there, but we can maybe take a look. Um, but unfortunately, that's going to have to wait because we are shit out of time and it is time for us to say goodbye. Uh, we have to say goodbye to the people now, Darko. It's been another wonderful broadcast. I think we got a lot of discussion. Both of us worked out a little aggression that we had built up. Um, it's always and, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, always good. I feel a lot better now. Um, and hand, I think we way? were... Pardon? How's your hand, by the way? I hardly even feel it because it's a sacrifice I made voluntarily. Um, <laughs> yeah. So until next time, people, try to stay free. I know it's hard in this world. Uh, try to keep your head up. I know that's hard in this world, too. Try to be human. Be compassionate with the people, even those that you disagree with or can't even understand. Um, they are human beings, too. And, um, you know, maybe with more compassion, we can actually get someplace in this world. Um, I don't know what else to say. Darko, it's been nice chatting with well, you again. Sir, yeah, likewise, brother. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And as we said earlier in this show, please subscribe, like, share, retweet this episode, share the word, share the love so we can continue longer doing these shows. Also, as we said earlier in the show today, start thinking about working for yourselves. Make yourselves rich, not somebody else, for a tiny portion of a, what, what they call a wage. And lastly, as we mentioned earlier in this episode, in the words of John, Mr. McAfee himself, follow your hearts. And that's it. You have to. I, I am going to be following my heart into the bathroom as soon as we're done here. So, uh, everybody, uh, have a uh, wonderful upcoming week. Hopefully, we've got better news this week than we did this last week. And uh, we will see you next week to round it all up for you and give our worthless opinions. Until then... We are the Degenerates. Well, there's only one thing to say. It's a most unusual, most unusual, most unusual day. Cut.